Hey, what's going on, phone dogs? Bo HD here, and Blue sent me the other Blue smartphone announced at CES 2016, the Vivo 5. It's a lot like the Blue Vivo XL, which debuted along its side, but it features more powerful specs, a more premium build, and a slightly higher price tag. So, what are some of those specs? The Vivo 5 does feature a 5.5 inch HD Super AMOLED display with a 720p resolution and Corning Gorilla Glass 3. Inside, it's packing an octa-core 1.3 GHz 64-bit processor with not 2, but 3 GB of RAM. There's a 13 megapixel rear and 5 megapixel front-facing camera sensor, 32 GB of onboard storage with support for a microSD card, and a 3150 milliamp battery with quick charging. But as far as the build goes, it features a 6.9 millimeter thin aluminum unibody design with polished chamfered edges. You can get all of this for only $200 off contract. But let's lift off the top of the box to reveal the headset. I'm going to put the headset off to the side for now while I take a look at the contents of the box. First, we have a SIM card ejector tool. There's a USB quick charging wall wart, a pair of earphones with removable tips and music playback control buttons, a USB Type-C cable for charging or syncing data, and there's a USB Type-C to USB 3.0 adapter to transfer and sync data on and off the device. I'm really glad to see Blue implement the new USB Type-C standard port in the Vivo 5, and it's nice to see them include this adapter here for no additional cost. But we have even more goodies in the box. Some of the literature actually details the SIM card installation process, as well as the setup process. Then we have a silicone protective case, as well as a screen protector, to provide all-around protection to your shiny new aluminum phone. Now we can take a first look at the device by sliding it out of the plastic bag and removing all of its plastic clothing. I really admire the design. I can see some resemblance to the blue Vivo Air, but I like to think of it, and this is kind of a stretch, but hear me out, as a bigger, thinner iPhone 5 or 5S with a unibody aluminum design instead of an aluminum and glass construction. It really feels great in the hand and it feels night and day different than the Vivo XL. But here's what you need to know about the Vivo 5 beyond the build construction. It features a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED display with a 720p resolution. It's the same panel that is found in the Vivo XL and to be totally honest with you, I'm in love with it. It's very bright, has excellent viewing angles and the saturation and contrast are supreme. It doesn't appear to be the most color accurate panel, but that doesn't really matter to me. I want a display that looks unreal when displaying content. Um, I would like to see a 1080p resolution display in the next uh, version, but to be totally honest with you, the 720p resolution isn't bad. As for the software experience, Blue has added a custom skin on top of Android 5.1 Lollipop. There's no app drawer, so all of your apps will be placed on the home screens, but you can change this with a custom launcher of your choice. The notification panel has been slightly redesigned. In the upper right-hand corner, there's an icon to open the app manager section in the settings, and there are no quick settings icons here. Instead, Blue has opted in for a quick settings tray that actually slides up from the bottom portion of the display. From here, you'll see many of the standard quick settings icons, a volume toggle, and there's even a fake call feature that can get you out of a sticky situation. My only complaint with this menu is that when you pull it up, you'll often press the capacitive touch navigation button, uh, most likely the home button, um, but thankfully it doesn't register the navigation command when that happens, but the vibration feedback is registered which can also be turned off in the settings if you want. Okay, it's a minor complaint, but I did want to mention it. What is neat about this custom skin, however, is that it performs very well. So it's very smooth, smoother than stock Android in some areas. The performance of the Vivo 5 is also very good, thanks largely in part to the octa-core processor and three gigabytes of RAM. It features one gigabyte more RAM than the Vivo XL, and I think it does show. I'm able to switch between applications in a snap. I would say multitasking is a breeze. The only thing that really slows me down is the fact that I'm not entirely adjusted to the layout of the menus and the navigation buttons. It's something that will take some time to adjust to if you're coming from iOS or stock Android, but overall, I'm impressed with the performance. In addition, the Vivo 5 features a 13 megapixel rear and five megapixel front facing camera sensor. It's not a bad sensor, but I'll have to spend more time with it before I come to a consensus of the quality. But in the meantime, here are some sample photos from the rear facing camera sensor, as well as a selfie from the five megapixel camera sensor. What's also neat to see is a lot of various camera modes. There's a professional mode, which will allow you to tweak the white balance, ISO, shutter speed, exposure, and so on 
We have a beauty mode, a magic focus mode, filter, HDR, panorama, night mode, smart scene, ultra pixel. You can even scan barcodes from the camera app as well as create animated GIFs. It's surprising to see so many functional camera modes in a budget smartphone like this. I mentioned earlier the Vivo 5 features a 3150 milliamp non-removable battery, which uh, should help the device last a full day on a single charge, especially with a battery saving AMOLED display. It's also worth mentioning the Vivo 5 and Vivo XL for that matter feature Hi-Fi DTS sound for an enhanced audio experience. Overall, I would probably have to say the Blue Vivo 5 is my new favorite blue smartphone. While I'm in love with the display and the performance, I think it's the design that I'm truly in love with. It's mind boggling to think you can get this device for only $200 off contract on Amazon or Best Buy, which I'll provide links to in the description if you are interested. Um, it makes you think if Blue can make a $200 aluminum smartphone, there's really no excuse for larger companies like LG, Samsung, Lenovo, Sony, you name it to produce flagship smartphones that cost hundreds of dollars more with less premium build materials. I'm not necessarily saying they are nowadays, but it's something to consider. With that said, let me know your thoughts of the Vivo 5. Remember, links to purchase the Vivo 5 will be in the description. I can imagine this device is going to sell out pretty fast, so you might want to place your order now if you are interested. As always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDoc.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.